1959, Mary Leakey discovered a hominid fossil at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. She was out walking her Dalmatians and stumbled upon a skull cap rising up out of the dirt. Paranthropus boisei. Two years later, Lewis and Mary's son Jonathan was mulling around the work site at Olduvai. He found a jawbone and skull fragments. He alerted his mom and dad, another major find. Homo habilis. The Leakeys gained worldwide media attention for their magnificent discoveries. Paranthropus boisei has proved to be relatively non-controversial since the initial find in 1959. Smithsonian, Paranthropus boisei, specialized skull with adaptions for heavy chewing, a strong sagittal crest, flatter, bigger brain skull. But shortly after its discovery, Homo habilis became embroiled in controversy. Even today, scientists continue to debate its taxonomic classification, dating, and physical characteristics. Kent State professor Owen Lovejoy, anatomist for Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, even called Homo habilis a waste paper basket of taxa. The debate largely centers around the initial classification of the species within the genus Homo. Additionally, many paleoanthropologists have raised doubts about whether Homo habilis truly merits recognition as a distinct species. Australia Museum Homo habilis has been a controversial species ever since the name was first announced, largely due to ape-like limb proportions. Continuing, some scientists prefer the name Australopithecus habilis because these individuals have physical similarities with the Australopithecines. From Britannica, many features of Homo habilis appear to be intermediate in terms of evolutionary development between the relatively primitive Australopithecus and the more advanced Homo species. Smithsonian, naming this species required a redefining of the genus Homo, reducing the lower limit of brain size. This sparked an enormous debate about the validity of the species. Though the brain size for Havilus is generally larger than a typical Australopithecine at 550 to 770 cc. GWU anatomy professor Bernard Wood, if Homo habilis is added to Homo, the genus has an incoherent mishmash of features. You have to cherry pick the data to come to any other conclusion. My sense is that Handyman should belong to its own genus, neither Australopith nor human. Dr. Ashley Hammond, Natural History Museum. Which hominid fossils belong to genus Homo? The more primitive, the more transitional members of the genus Homo, such as Homo habilis, tend to be the most controversial. Taxonomical Classification of Habilis. From PBS, Homo habilis, handyman, is so called because of the wealth of tools that have been found with its fossils. In the 1960s, there were three men who decided on classifying Leakey's find as genus Homo and naming it Homo habilis. Louis Leakey, Philip Tobias, and John Napier. Leakey's objective was to establish Homo habilis at the base of genus Homo. The species would thus be viewed as the first man. As for taxonomic classification, Philip Tobias of the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa held the greatest sway, 
Tobias was Raymond Dart's protege. Leakey pressured him hard to steer the classification away from an Australopithecine. But as Tobias revealed in a 2012 lecture years later, he quote unquote wasn't going to allow Lewis to bully him around. John Napier was a professor of anatomy at the University of London. Napier specialized in hand and feet. Napier finally conceded to Leakey that the species was deserving of genus homo designation based on the dexterity of the hand. Habilis had a greater opposable thumb than any Australopithecine, which allowed for greater tool-making abilities. Professor Wood, 2012 paper. Lewis, Tobias, and Napier made the case for adding the handyman to the genus Homo as Homo habilis, arguing it met three criteria. Continuing, an upright posture, a bipedal gait, and the dexterity to fashion primitive stone tools. Expanded temporal range for habilis. In the 1960s, when Lewis and Mary Leakey first discovered Homo habilis, it was estimated that the species ranged from 2.3 million years ago to 1.8 million years ago. Paper 2015, OH7, the 1.8 million year old Homo habilis, this partial skull and hand from Olduvai Gorge remains pivotal to evaluating the early evolution of the Homo lineage. Advanced dating techniques had not yet been ad widely adopted. The potassium-argon dating found OH7 to be 1.75 million years old. Most paleoanthropologists have placed Habilis at 1.8 million to 1.5 million years ago. From Britannica, Homo habilis, extinct species of human, the most ancient representative of the human genus Homo. Homo habilis inhabited parts of sub-Saharan Africa from roughly 2.4 to 1.5 million years ago. As additional fossils have come to light, the estimated age of Homo habilis has decreased from 1.8 to now as young as 1.4 million years ago. Ann Gibbons, New Face Reveals Multiple Lineages Alive at the Dawn of Our Genus Homo, Science.org, 2012. Homo habilis lived 2.3 million to 1.4 million years ago. Out of Africa Model Revised. Out of Africa theorists, including the Leakeys, early on favored a linear model, Australopithecines to Homo habilis to Homo erectus. Ann Gibbons, Science 2007, explains, paleoanthropologists believe that Homo habilis gave rise to Homo erectus between 2 million and 1.6 million years ago, in a neat line of descendants that led to modern humans. New Finds Redefining Homo Habilis Ann Gibbons continuing, Meve and Louise Leakey and their international collaborators describe the discovery of a surprisingly recent upper jawbone of Homo habilis in Kenya that persisted until 1.44 million years ago. ABC Net Australia 2007 New Fossils Rewrite Human Family Tree until this latest find, Homo habilis was thought to have lived from approximately 2.5 to 1.8 million years ago. Australia Museum, KNM ER 42703, a right upper jawbone dated to about 1.44 million years old, discovered in Iloret, Kenya in 2000. It is the youngest fossil of Homo habilis yet found. Smithsonian, while scientists used to think that Homo habilis was the ancestor of Homo erectus, 
recent discoveries of a late 1.44 million year old Homo habilis and a relatively early 1.55 million year old Homo erectus. Continuing, they are from the same area of Lake Turkana, Kenya, which challenges the conventional view that these species evolved one after the other. The fact that two species coexisted for a million years implies that Homo habilis might not be the direct ancestor of Homo erectus. National Geographic Even Meave Leakey proposed revising Homo habilis' position in the human family tree as a result of the new finds. Science 2007 their coexistence makes it unlikely that Homo erectus evolved from Homo habilis, says paleoanthropologist Mivliki, an associate of the National Museums of Kenya. Multiple waves of Homo erectus into Eurasia. ABC.net, Australia. Homo erectus is an important hominid because it is believed to have been the first to leave Africa. Homo erectus migrating from Africa to Eurasia at a much earlier date would be consistent with Homo erectus fossil finds at Dimanisi 1.9 million years ago. Additionally, it would be consistent with more recent lithics and fossil finds of Homo erectus in East Asia. This provides further support for the multi-regional origins model. Eurasians with direct lineage from Homo erectus 1.9 million years ago to 100,000 years ago outside of Africa. Africans with entirely separate origins, possibly a direct lineage going back to Homo habilis 1.4 million years ago or a related species. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll see you soon.